Thank you. Uh, before I get started, I want to just say thank you to Cindy. Uh, I was an early investor in Cosmo, and it was really great that you turned out the lights. Um, yeah, that wasn't a good investment, <clears throat> but it did start something, I think. Let's just take a minute and say hi. Oh, thank you. Hi. How are you? Check out how are you feeling. Check out how are you doing. Just settle in. It's a great panel. It's kind of fun. The seats up front look really comfy. Are they good? Yeah, it's good. You don't get to fall asleep, so just stay there. Settle in. Be here. There's a lot of buzz in the air. And from that place, I want you to think about a radical idea. Can we go back? Thank you. Can we go back? Thank you. One more. We can build better leaders by building better humans. Simple. Easy. We have a tremendous leadership problem in our industries, in our country, in our community. What's the problem? Well, the problem is building better humans is hard. Being a better human is hard. Part of it is hard because we spend so much time not actually knowing how we are doing. Staring at a screen. If it's Russian dolls, we should be staring at it. Moving from space to space, from thing to thing, with a sense of busyness. This being human is hard. Working, leading, growing, just the act of becoming an adult. I have three teenagers, no, not teenagers, oh my God, three 20-year-olds. Becoming an adult is hard. It's challenging. And more often than not, somewhere around 35 to 55, we turn around and wake up and we realize that we're living a life that we were actually did not intend. It's one of the things that happened to me that led me to leave the venture business. Worse still, adults who are in this position, especially those that we give power to, because they're not actually spending time figuring out what's going on with themselves, they tend to twist their organizations to do their psychological bidding. We've all been led by people who are not dealing with their shit. But here's the good news. We can use the journey to becoming a leader to finish the process of actually growing up. We can become the leaders that we were born to be by becoming the adults that we were born to be. And in doing so, give our communities and our families and our organizations the leadership that they need. The problem is that this art of growing up requires understanding the why of your leadership. And that's why I talk about something called the radical self-inquiry process. And it's basically this. It's the process by which the bullshitting stops. The process by which you strip away the persona. How you doing? Everything's great. Yeah? Really? Talk to a startup CEO. How you doing? We're crushing it. No, you're not. No, you're not, and everybody knows. But 
But this is an essential step to understanding why we lead the way we do. A few uh, years ago, Bobby came to one of our uh, leadership boot camps. And the first night, I'm walking around, probably without shoes, because that's what I do. I'm wearing shoes to be nice today. And people are crying, and I'm reading poetry, and he's getting really, really pissed off at me. He's like squirming. And he has a southern accent, which I won't try to uh, replicate. But he says, damn it, Jerry, I didn't come here to read poetry. I came here because I have a greedy SOB head of sales who's wrecking havoc in my company. I made a deal with him. He decided to stay. I told him I'd give him his money back if he didn't get an answer by the end of the weekend. A couple of days later, we're talking about this, and he's really upset. And I said, Bobby, who hired this greedy SOB? He was really shy. He said, me. I said, Bobby, tell me about greed. He got really upset. I said, tell me about hunger. The light bulb went off. He started to cry. He told the story of being 13 years old and running away from an abusive stepfather to live under an overpass in Atlanta, becoming addicted to alcohol. And I said to him, Bobby, what was the promise you made to yourself? He said that I'd never be hungry. I said, Bobby, what's wrong with your head of sales? He's doing exactly what your unconscious asked him to do. You outsourced your greed, you hired the greediest guy you could find, and you put him in charge of sales. Bobby had to take back that greed, change it into a wish to, for everyone in the company to have enough food. And sales tripled. True story. A couple years ago, Tracy came to one of our boot camps, similar kind of experience. She's really struggling to understand things, what's going on. She doesn't understand why she's struggling to get funding. Is it because she's a woman? Is it because they don't understand? I said, Tracy, tell me about shame. She gets upset. And she tells me a story about being bullied in middle school because she was a multiracial child and her hair was funny. And she spent an entire year eating lunch in the bathroom stall at middle school. I said, Tracy, what does your company do? They provide meals to other startups so that they can get out from behind their desk and eat in community. And she had not made the connection. She had built a company to get people feeling connected over food. She incorporated her thinking into the mission statement. She incorporated this memory into the mission statement. She started to use the word love everywhere she could, but she raised $11 million. These structures, these belief systems, these patterns shape all of our life choices. I call them subroutines because like good programming, they exist in like application 1.0 and they hang out forever, dictating and taking time. But they create a technical debt. And that debt can sometimes impede our growth and our satisfaction as adults. Carl Jung said, until you make the unconscious conscious, it will direct your life and you will call it fate. Want to know why you date the same person again and again and again? It's in your subroutine. Leading people well is hard because it requires that you grow up. But to grow, you've got to be willing to face what you carry. James Baldwin said, not everything that can be faced, not everything that is faced can be changed, 
but nothing can be changed until it's faced. We are dem- it's demanded that we grow. And by meeting that demand, we'll not only lead well, but we'll end up living the life we were meant to live. In the end, conscious humans are better adults, and adults make better leaders. Thank you.